Seoul and Tokyo are bracing for even stormier ties after Seoul's top court ruled on victims of Japanese colonial rule. I'm Alex Jensen with K News Today for Korea Now. So, an already tumultuous relationship between South Korea and Japan took a turn this week when the Supreme Court reached a landmark ruling. The decision ended nearly 14 years of legal disputes here over the issue, though this could be just the start of a new series of conflicts. What the court did was acknowledge individual rights to compensation for damage caused by Japanese rule over Korea from 1910 to 45. Before we break open the Pandora's box completely, let's look a little closer at this specific case. The court on Tuesday ordered Nippon Steel and Sumitomo Metal to pay four victims 100 million won each for forced labor during World War II. Rather tragically, only one of the plaintiffs is still alive, 94-year-old Ichun Shik, seen sobbing in his wheelchair. The plaintiffs originally lodged a damages suit in South Korea in 2005, as they'd struggled to get anywhere in Japan. And here's where this all started to take so long. The highest court in Osaka ruled that NSSM, the company created by a merger between Nippon Steel and Sumitomo Metal Industries, was not financially liable for its past. Courts here in South Korea also dismissed the plaintiff's claims until the Supreme Court ordered a retrial, a move that hinged on Seoul's constitutional view that Japan's colonial rule was illegal, contrary to Tokyo's position. And it didn't buy the whole argument that NSSM can escape its pre-merger history. This decision puts the company in a tough position because victims could seek to seize its assets, especially here in South Korea. But things are further complicated by a 1965 treaty signed by Seoul and Tokyo, a key line of defense for Japan, which along with firms accused of forced labor, claims Tokyo's provision of 500 million US dollars as part of the 65 deal was in exchange for a complete and irreversible settlement. A senior South Korean foreign ministry officials told us the ruling is expected to shake the foundation of South Korea-Japan relations maintained since the signing of the 1965 agreement on the settlement of problems related to property, claims and economic cooperation. Tokyo's Foreign Minister Taro Kono has described the ruling as totally unacceptable. He added his government will consider every option, which could include bringing the case to the International Court of Justice. Japan's upset because now we have a legal basis for individuals to take action to seek compensation for colonial era abuses and could force Seoul to review its whole strategy in dealing with Japan. According to court data, 10 other similar cases pertaining to forced labor are already pending at courts across the country, including two at the top court. But time is also pressing. Recent government data show the number of forced labor survivors here dropped 19% to 6,570 as of October, compared with two years ago. Even that number dwarfs that of the few dozen known surviving so-called comfort women who were forced to serve Imperial Japan through sexual slavery. The two sides have been at odds over the last South Korean administration's 2015 deal to set up a fund for former sex slaves because victims were not adequately consulted and still seek sincere repentance. With several lawsuits here against Japan on the comfort women issue as well, Top South Korean and Japanese foreign ministry officials held talks in Tokyo last week, but it doesn't look like we're any closer to a breakthrough on that front. What we can say, South Korea has a heavy diplomatic burden. Yes, there is the risk of an economic impact, such as a drop in Japanese business investment, but Seoul now has to find a way to retain Tokyo, not only as an economic partner, but also in cooperating on handling North Korea but to do so without ignoring the victims of Japan's past that Tokyo's present government seemed unwilling to offer closure to.